the, the four degrees rather than two degrees or the, the, the higher changes. It's, I think we have to look back a little bit as to where the two degrees came from. This, you know, globally, as we talk about two degrees, this was often the, the target that was used to set uh, emissions reduction. So when they're having negotiations at COP and so on, they're talking about two degrees as let's try and uh, change our emissions portfolio so that we can limit global warming to less than two degrees by the end of the century. Um, it, it's not necessarily saying that's the most realistic uh, prediction of what the climate change will look like by the end of the century. And what we're finding is that the, um, the emissions uh, trajectories that we would have to follow to limit global warming by two degrees are becoming increasingly unlikely um, globally. And globally, this has sort of been re uh, recognized because um, the time since the IPCC scenarios were developed in 2000 and now, we have sort of 10, 10, 13 years to look at what our emissions actually look like. And when we compare it to the different emission scenarios, we're actually uh, tracking at or above even the most extreme of those scenarios, whereas the two degrees was a sort of a very moderate scenario. So globally, the, the likelihood of um, keeping the mean uh, surface temperatures to below two degrees is increasingly unrealistic, and um, pretty soon it will almost be impossible. Um, but having said that, the Mekong Basin itself is tracking above the global average um, in terms of climate change. So where if you're expecting a two degrees increase um, globally, then you will be getting a higher increase in the, in the Mekong Basin than you would be getting it compared to the global average. So even, even regardless of what the change in the global temperature is, the Mekong will always be a little bit more than that, that global change. Why? Why? Yeah. Well, it's, I think it's the... Um, Exactly, um, exactly why, I'm not entirely sure, but it's to do with the, the dynamics of the global climate system. I mean, it could be, it could be related to like, the number of um, sun hours that, the, that you know, this area of the equator is getting compared to, say, you know, what, what other areas are getting. Um, and there'll be a number of factors that could influence it, but it's, the, it's, the, um, it's consistent. For example, you know, in this project, we use six GCM uh, global circulation models. And it was consistent in all the in, in all the global circulation models that we were using that the result that they're showing for the, for their cells over the Mekong Basin is is higher than what, what the average for the whole world was. So it's um the, the specific dynamics I think will take a lot of time to sort of understand, but um, it's it is a consistent trend in all of those projections. So what we what we were projecting for the basin was the um, and what, what we we're presenting in the report and in the, in the press release and so on was the the average of these six models. So it, 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 it reflects the, the um, if you imagine six models all showing different projections, what, would it, what we were projecting of three, uh, three, to, three to five degrees by 2050 is the average of those six. So there are some that are projecting higher than that and some that are projecting a little bit lower, but the average is this um, three to five degrees. Just, uh, I think, uh, uh, to respond on the on the crops, I like uh, Olivier, who's our agricultural expert and team leader, to uh, respond on those issues. Hi, um, good afternoon. Um, just uh, what you mentioned and what Jeremy was uh, explaining as example is uh, two different aspects and they.